everybody, I'm back for part two of my June quick books review. Graceling by Kristen Kishore. I already did a video review of this, so just in case you missed that one, let's just say huge disappointment. It was great premise, poor execution, bad writing, draggy plot, um... What did I give it? Like a 5. 5 out of 10. It could have been amazing. And uh, I think Kishore just needed more help. Maybe needed uh, better editors to, you know, fix all of the writing mistakes. And kind of, she needed someone to help her and say, okay, you need to have more actually happening here. All of these chapters and chapters of people just traveling and talking does not really make for a good book but unfortunately that didn't happen so five out of ten for me okay, next I have another Rex Stout one over my dead body this is another Nero Wolf mystery uh, in this one a girl shows up at Nero Wolf's house and claims to um, be a friend of his adopted daughter who he thought had died and uh, there was first it started out as just like a suspected theft and then it turned into several murders uh, I really enjoyed this book it's still not my favorite of Nero Wolf books but um, I really like the characters involved and I was surprised at how the ending came about. I feel like I shouldn't have been, um, it, it wasn't anything, like, astounding for me, but I was still, this one I would give a 7 out of 10 rating. Cards on the Table, another Agatha Christie book. Uh, this is kind of different from her usual books because there's only four suspects. It is, um, this eccentric guy invites four uh, sleuths or detectives. Um, there's Poirot, this mystery writer Ariadne Oliver, uh, Superintendent Battle who works for Scotland Yard. He's been in a couple other books too. And Colonel Race who's in the Secret Service and he's also been in some other books. Um, and then four murderers to a party. And uh, during a bridge game, the two, there's the detectives in one room playing a game. And then there is the victim and then the bad people playing a game in, of bridge in the other room and uh, at one point or another someone murdered the host and so there's only four people it could have been which is very different from all of her other books where it's basically like suspect everyone <laughs> this one you suspect four people so you know it's going to be one of them um, I really loved this book I loved seeing all of those uh, some of Chrissy's, well, Poirot is the most famous, but some of her big characters appear all together and work together. I really enjoyed that. I love seeing, like, the backstory for all of the murdering bad people, and which may or may not have been true, and trying to figure it out, because there was only four people. Uh, I, the bridge part, I don't know anything about bridge, so Poirot actually used that to solve the mystery, the bridge game. It was all over my head. I've never played it. I had no idea what any of it meant at all. Uh, so I figured it out another way, but I did get there, actually. So this it was very, very, the writing was very tight, very well plotted. I would give this a 10 out of 10. It's one of my all-time favorites so far of Agatha Christie's books. <sighs> Next, I have... Fade by Lisa McMahon. This is the second in her Dreamcatcher trilogy. They're about um, a high school student named Janie who has this power to go into other people's dreams and she can even if she tries hard can like change the outcome or help the people to change what's going on in them. And in this one she's working like with the, the police to use her power to catch I guess there is a, a, a suspected rapist uh, who's one of the teachers at the high school um, I like this one it's not an all like one of my all-time favorite books I like it more than the first one there's 
lot going on and there's kind of like a, a mystery element and Janie's starting to have problems with her ability. Um, it, they're very, very quick and easy to read. Is this is they're really short. Um, the sentences and everything are pretty short, too. Uh, I would recommend these to maybe they're not amazing works of literature, but I think I think if I were a teenager, they would probably have been in my top favorites. But uh, right now, I'm I don't know if I'm too old or I'm just. No, like the romance in them, it just doesn't really mean much to me. I didn't. It's not bad, but it was just kind of there. So I would give this probably a seven out of ten. I did a review on this too, but it's Divergent by Veronica Ross. Really highly recommended dystopian novel. Um, I I already did a full review of it, but anyway, I love it's. I love the characters, especially the main main character. Very uh, strong, yet in a really realistic way. A really good debut for a really young author, too. I can't wait to read the sequels to this trilogy and anything else that she plans to write in the future, because I was really impressed. I rated it a 9 out of 10, in case I didn't say it before. I forgot. <laughs> um, next one is another Agatha Christie one, <laughs> Dumb Witness. This is another Poirot one. I think actually all of the ones so far have been Poirot. I guess she was just on a Poirot kick at the time. Uh, an old woman writes a letter to Poirot, but he doesn't get it until months later, and she's already dead by that time. So he has to figure out what went on. And the dumb witness actually refers to the woman's dog, Bob, which I thought was misleading because he didn't actually witness the crime. He was, like, out of the house when it took place. Was, there was actually two incidents that happened, and he wasn't there for either of them. But uh, he did... Uh, Hastings, who's, like, Poirot's sidekick in some of the novels, imagined, like, conversations with him when they were <laughs> investigating. And he really got along well with the dog. Um, um, the book on the whole, I did solve it later. I had a, a totally different theory at first, but I came to the right conclusion later on. Um, it was it was good. It was entertaining, but there was there was nothing super special about it. I would probably give this a seven out of ten. Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. I actually tried to make a review out of this before, but I couldn't find enough to say about it to fill up a whole video. So I felt that would be kind of cheating. Um, this is the first in a trilogy, and uh, <clears throat> it is this character, Yelena, in this fantasy world of, what is it, Ixia, is on, she is on death row, and she's going to be the next to be executed until she's offered in exchange to become a um, food taster for the commander who is the leader of the country after assassinating the king. Um, and I really enjoyed this book. Um, I didn't think that the, the character of Yelena, she was really anything special, but I mean, I liked her well enough. It, it did have a lot of action in it and political intrigue and fantasy and all that. And the backstory too was really good. Uh, there was only one thing that kind of brought it down a little bit in my eyes, which was the romance. Not that I have anything against the two particular characters getting together, but I felt like the scene where they actually do have a love scene was very, very much out of place. Um, it was ridiculous. I actually, it took me out of the story because I laughed at it. I'm like, oh my god, this is so dumb. Why did she put this here? It was like, like a cheesy romance novel, just this one little scene, nothing graphic or anything like that. But it just took me way out of it, and I'm like, whoa, 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 please. That doesn't belong there. Maybe if it had been in another spot, waited it until the second novel. I don't know. As it is, I probably, I wanted to give it a 9, but I'm probably, because of that, it's going to get an 8 out of 10 for me. And next on the list is... <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you see a pattern here? Murder in the Muse by Agatha Christie. This is uh, four long short stories, not quite novellas, but longer short stories, all featuring Poirot. This book, uh, three of them are deaths, and one of them is a theft of some important government papers. The, that one about the theft, I actually figured out like immediately. I thought it was very obvious what actually happened. The other ones, I did not. I don't think I figured them out at all, to be honest. Um, this is kind of a mixed bag for me. Some of them, a couple I really enjoyed, but uh, I felt like maybe they would have been better if she had fully like fleshed it out in a real like novel format. Um, the one with the, what is it, the incredible theft, yeah, that's when the papers were stolen. I didn't really find that interesting at all. As I said, I thought it was really obvious on the boring side, kind of pointless, really. Um, it was nice to have something different than, you know, a usual dead body. But on the whole, is a, a collection, I would probably give this mm, 6 or... I'll be nice and give it a 7 out of 10. So it's not bad, but it's not... Yeah, I wouldn't recommend this for anyone, like, wanting to try out Agatha Christie, because it's not exactly her best work, either. Um, next one, as I am finishing up, I have... City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare. This is an extension of her Mortal Instruments series, which was originally a trilogy. Um, this was supposed to originally focus on Simon, who is the Daylighter Vampire, but then she expanded it to really put Jason Clary as more of a main feature again, and plus all the other characters, which that I felt detracted from it for me because Clary I don't really care for that much. I don't hate her, but she's not one of my favorite characters in fiction by at all. Jace it needs mental help and as a couple I really don't care about them whatsoever. So all of those parts it was like she needed to invent in this one he's having dreams that like he's gonna kill Clary. I just felt like she needed to drag out this thing of they can't be together. Milk the cash cow for all it's worth. Give it a, eh, this is a 7 out of 10. If I were mean, I would give it a 6. But nothing more than that because they're not terrible at all. So I would... I would another Agatha Christie one. Uh, Hercule Poirot's Christmas. As you can see, this is another Poirot one. And it's set at Christmas time where this... Mean, rich, old guy. It's a locked room mystery. He's found dead in his room, and the whole family's there for Christmas. They all would have had a motive to kill him because he was kind of like a tyrant, and a lot of his children and hated him for various reasons. Uh, I thought I was going to like this, but I felt like it was very dialogue-heavy and kind of draggy. A lot of it was just, like, interviewing the suspects, like, sitting down and talking and repeating, like, you know, the interviews, or the Poirot and the detectives, the local police force, again, discussing the possibilities and discussing the results of the interviews with the people. Um, the parts where stuff was actually happening was were very interesting, but there was all of that to get through, too. As to the solution, um, I... I did figure it out, but I wasn't sure in the beginning. I'm like, you know, what if it was this? And I didn't really dwell on it more. And then it wasn't until near the end again. I'm like, you know, that I think I was right after all. So this book, again, is, is probably going to be a 6 out of 10 reading. Here we go. The Regatta Mystery, another Agatha Christie one. And this is a series of short stories, if you can read, they're featuring Hercule Poirot, Mr. Parker Pine, and Miss Marple. There are two Parker Pine ones, one Miss Marple, five Poirots, and then there's another one with that has no relation to any of her other stories. Um, the, um, I liked probably out of these, the Poirot one's the best. The Miss Marple one was good too. That one supernatural one, which was called in a glass darkly it was just kind of bizarre. I guess she wanted to do something different 
but I didn't feel like it fit in, and it doesn't feel like Agatha Christie to me. That's not what I'd like to read her for. I like to have those dead bodies. <laughs> um, I probably would rate this book a 6 out of 10 because there was nothing really outstanding in it. Some of them were enjoyable enough. Others were meh. So there was... Anyway, that is it for my June books review. So I will maybe do a movie review or something, but if not, anyway, I will see you guys in July.